This is the response video to America Uncovered's video, Is Fake Meat the Future of Food? This is part three. Part one and two is in the description down below. Okay, but at least fake meat has fewer calories than real meat, right? It depends. Every fake meat is different, so you really have to compare each one individually. But when you compare the Whopper with the Impossible Whopper, they're actually pretty similar. They both have between 600 and 700 calories. So here's the thing. I don't think Chris Chappell wants to say anything positive about plant-based meats. I can tell that he has a relatively pro-animal based meat bias from all the videos I've seen from him and America Uncovered. Plant-based meats tend to have usually around the same, if not less calories on average. On average, they tend to have a bit less calories. And I was able to find this from Medical News Today. And they go over the positives and negatives of plant-based meats. Now, the thing is, is I didn't read this entire article. I just went to the calories and fat. And in here, I can go to sources. Boop. And right over here, I can find the exact same thing I was looking for. Was calculated for nutrients and HRS. Plant-based options were generally lower in kilojoules, total and saturated fat, higher in carbohydrate, sugar, and dietary fiber compared with meat. Only 4% of products were lower in sodium. After COVID, I think we all deserve to have delicious, healthy, environmentally friendly steaks leak from a lab and spread around the globe. The biggest hurdle to making lab-grown meat mainstream could be getting people comfortable with the idea of eating something from a petri dish. After all, we have no idea what the long-term health effects could be. But considering people eat Twinkies and Cool Whip, well, how much worse could it be? How much worse could it be? Well, it could be ethical shit in your food. Remember, shit and trash food makes everything shit and trash. Ethical shit in your food, it's healthy for the whole family. Brought to you by culture, marketing, and corporate lobbying. Shit and trash food, for me and for you. But, jokes aside, a big common working, th working theory for what started the sw swine flu and the Spanish flu were pigs. Animal to human transmissions over a decade ago have been killing millions of people. And when we're talking about the subject of animal to human transmission, it's a problem for farmers to this day, and it's been a problem for, for farmers throughout history. And when it comes down to it, people really have this tendency of being really inconsistent that they don't want to um, promote or agree with. If the reason why you don't want to eat lab-grown meat is because of the possibility of unsanitary conditions or the possibility of viral outbreaks, then why would you eat any animal-based products to begin with that are farmed? If you were to actually have a perfectly grass-fed piece of steak, no antibiotics, no hormones, perfectly butchered, raised really well, and if you were at your friend's place and if you were to drop it, and if that piece of steak dropped on a little bit of dog shit, even if it could be proven in a hypothetical that it was healthier, cleaner, and less disgusting than anything you could buy from the grocery store, would you wash that steak off and eat it if it was proven that after washing it off, it would still be cleaner than anything you could get at the grocery store. A lot of people wouldn't. What is the point? My point is, is people's sense of disgust and what they're willing to eat can greatly shift just based off of what they've been culturally conditioned to and what they observe. People don't observe the disgusting things that happen behind closed doors with animal agriculture, but a lot of people are willing to go to store and buy meat. And when it comes to lab-grown meat, the thing is, is I actually hope that one day maybe that does happen and that maybe one day it reduces the amount of suffering that happens within animal agriculture. But a big problem I have even besides that is it's really questionable if animal agriculture is any better than the potential lab-grown meat. And I wouldn't be surprised if lab-grown meat was more sanitary and had better could be better easily managed than a bunch of animals that you can't completely control. Like, we can't brainwash and psychically manipulate these animals like Jean Grey from X-Men. <laughs> you know, th these animals are going to do what they're going to do. If they're going to eat each other, they're going to eat each other. If they're going to roll around in shit, we can't stop that. Well, we all we can do is try and clean it. But the reality is, is when it comes down to these fucking animals living in their own shit pens, it's not exactly a sanitary start. Yet most people might will not. Yet most people that eat animal-based products most likely have some concept and some knowledge of this and don't mind eating it. But the moment something unsanitary that they've not been culturally conditioned to to accept comes up to promote, 
same people might take an issue with it. The whole point I'm trying to say here is if the idea of, let's say, a viral outbreak from lab-grown meat scares you, then you shouldn't be eating animal ag anything from animal agriculture to begin with. If the possibility of unknown health side effects is what disturbs you, I can understand that. Even though to an extent it's understandable, I do have to ask the audience, do you consider antibiotics, the possibility of it being raised and shit, being butchered improperly, even if it's perfectly grass-fed, do you think about the negative health consequences of modern anim animal agriculture to begin with, or the literally the un unbelievable negative correlations when it comes to health for people eating animal-based products, as well as the causations which we can talk about in another video. Basically, in short, if you're not skeptical of animal agriculture when it comes to how these animals raised, butchered, and antibiotic resistance, and if you eat meat, then why be skeptical of lab-grown meat at all? And the reality is, is if you're skeptical of lab-grown meat, and if you're not skeptical of modern animal agriculture, to be consistent, I think you should be skeptical of both. Based off Chris Chappell's humors and tone, if I had to take a guess, I think he himself might have some skepticism of lab-grown meat, or he might be weary of it, or scared of it, potentially, or he's addressing or making humor towards people's already pre-existing fears. And I'm just giving you some food for thought. Now, with that being said, when it comes to what Chris Chappell refers to as fake meat, one day it's going to be the most popular meat, I think. One day, I think, it's going to be considered real meat. And then one day, we're no longer going to use the word meat because it was associated with murder and complete genocide of innocent animals. And we'll have a new name for it. Not to mention, plant-based meat's potential to be healthier for you is limitless. But honestly, what I really think is going to happen, if I had to take a guess, is that plant-based proteins and plant-based meats, their potential for flavor and taste is limitless. Animal-based meats have a limit based off the substance that it is. Like, for, like, basically what I'm trying to say here is we've only been creating modern plant-based meats for such a short period of time. I think one day we're going to have plant-based meats 100, 200, 50 years from now, 20 years from now. They're going to taste drastically better than animal-based meats. And I think it's only a matter of time. So what is my conclusion for America Uncovered? Even though the research could have been a lot better, I understand they had a short amount of time. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they did the best they could with the time that they had. So the, to the audience, please understand, this is a complex subject. These individuals are journalists, not nutritionists, and not scientists. But when it comes to the subject, as a recommendation for next time, if they're not already doing this, they should listen to arguments and debates from people that believe plant-based meats are better, and then people who believe animal-based meats are better, and people who believe cultured-based meats are better. Health professionals that believe a certain diet or a certain thing is more healthy might have more knowledge on that subject than an individual on their own might be able to research in a few hours. So listening to any complex video that goes over research and data, and that actually makes claims and it's not just an opinion, from all sides of the aisle would give the America Uncovered staff a much more well-rounded view on this subject. And if they've already been doing that, well, this is pretty fucking sad then.